And so today, as I said, there are books that talk about Rasulullah how he prayed. And that's what we should follow. These are differences of scholars in their own era. Muslims who can be reached with knowledge today have no reason to be attached to those. But Muslims who have grown up in societies that are predominantly following this or this madhab, there is no issue with them following that madhab. And so, sister, don't confuse yourself. Just follow what is authentic, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Yes, and, and, and this is why when the scholars looked at all those versions, it is there, based on their knowledge to assess which one is the most authentic. And, and this is an example, but there are other examples in which the prophet, I'm sorry, the scholars have come to a conclusion that the report about doing it this way, yes, it has reached that scholars, but in fact, based on other information, there is more robust evidence that this way is better. And so that's what the scholars have adopted. So for you, sister, and for all of us, we should, we have no reason to be in the midst of this especially for the new Muslims that we, we have other things to think about, inshallah. So the reason I wanted to uh, introduce you really to the two ways in which Sajda Sahu is, is performed is that um, sometimes when you, you might be praying behind an Imam uh, and um, it's important that you're familiar with both ways so that you don't get a surprise uh, if, if the Imam does Sajda Sahu, you, you know exactly what's happening. Because if you're only familiar with the one way and the Imam does it a different way, then you, you, won't, be, you won't know what's going on. So I'm going to just um, sit down here and actually just, firstly I'll do a refresher of what we say when we, we're in the sitting position because we've covered that before but I think it'd be nice to do a refresher. And I'll do it with the Sajda Sahu uh, so that you can see how it's done both, both ways. So this is the final rakat, okay, so you'll be in the sitting position. Assalamualaikum <laughs> Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammadin kama sallaita ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim wa barik ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammadin kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim fil alamina innaka amin al-majid Allahumma inni awuz beka min azabi kabar wa min azabi jahannam وأعوذ بك من فتنة المسيح الدجال وأعوذ بك من فتنة المحيا والممات اللهم إني أعوذ بك من المحسن والمدرم اللهم إني ظلمت نفسي ظلما كثيرا ولا يغفر الذنوب إلا أنت فاغفر لي مغفرة من عندك وارحمني إنك أنت الغفور المحيط الله أكبر Subhanahu rabbil ala wa bihamdi Subhanahu rabbil ala wa bihamdi Subhanahu rabbil ala wa bihamdi Allahu Akbar Allahumma kfirni wa rhamni wa jhumni wa zuhni wa ahlini wa ahlini Allahu Akbar Subhanahu rabbil ala wa bihamdi Subhanahu rabbil ala wa bihamdi Subhanahu rabbil ala wa bihamdi Allahu Akbar Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Okay? So this is the one way of doing it. Okay? So this is how we do it in the Shafi school and, and there's various other schools that we do it this way. And then the other way. Attahiyyatun mubarakatu sanawatu tayyibatu illahi assalamu alayka. أيها النبي ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام علينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله 
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الله أكبر سبحان رب العالمين الحمد سبحان رب العالمين الحمد سبحان رب العالمين الحمد الله أكبر الله مكني ورحمني وقولني وزدني وحدني وعافني الله أكبر سبحان رب العالمين الحمد سبحان رب العالمين الحمد سبحان رب العالمين الحمد الله أكبر التحيات مباركات السلامات الطيبات لله السلام عليك أيها النبي ورحمة الله وبركاته And then from there you continue all the way to the end with the good, the dua and then As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah Okay? So these are the two, two different ways that you might experience um, particularly when you are uh, whenever you're following an imam, uh, you always follow the imam. Okay, so you, wh whichever method he's doing, you, you, you follow the imam. Um, so now let's talk a little bit about how, under what circumstances you, you're going to be doing the sajda sahu. So let's say we talked about the situation where you might um, feel unsure. Okay, have I performed three rakats? Have I performed four rakats? Okay, so you're, you're in your third rakat, you, you, you're unsure. Is it three? Is it four? Okay. Now, if you have equal doubt, okay, you're really not sure. It, it could be three, it could be four. I, I really don't know which it is. Okay. You're really unsure. Okay. So in that situation, what you do is you, you're sure you've performed at least three. Okay. That's what you're sure of. Okay. So you, you assume you've performed three. Okay. You perform an extra one. Um, and then you perform the, the sajda sahu. Okay, so in that situation, you might have performed four. Let's say it's a uh, salatul asr. Let 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 me let, let me let me start again. You're praying salatul asr. Okay, you're in the third rakat. You, well, you, you think you're in the third rakat, but it could be the fourth rakat. You're not sure whether you're in the third rakat or the fourth rakat. Okay, in that situation, you've got an equal doubt. It could be. I could be in the third record, I could be in the fourth record, I'm really not sure. Okay? So what you do is you're certain you're at least in the third record. Okay? So you, you, do, you complete that record and you do one more. So the net result is because of your uncertainty, you're either going to be offering four or five okay? because of your uncertainty. This is Salat al Asr. And then you perform the uh, Sajjah Sahu. Um, if you're in a situation where you've got a slight doubt, but you really think I've done, f I'm, I'm in the, th you, you really think you, you've done four rakat and it's not your third rakat, okay? Then uh, you, 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 you take that situation, you, you assume you're in your fourth rakat and uh, you can offer the sajda sahu, okay? So whenever you've got a doubt, okay, you offer the sajda sahu and if the doubt is equal weighting, you're really not sure whether it is three or four, then you assume it's three. Or if you're, if you're really not sure it's two or three, you, you assume it's two. Okay? So if the doubt is equal, you, you go with the lesser. Okay? If you're really pretty sure you've done four, okay, but maybe I'm not really not, I'm not 100% sure, but you're, you're really more inclined, I, I really think I've done four, but I'm not 100% sure, then you, you assume you've done four. Okay? So, the Sajjah Sahu is offered in this situation where you, you've got the doubt, um, you lean towards what you are more sure of, okay? And, and if the level of uncertainty is equal, then you lean to the side of caution, uh, and you go uh, with what you're th sure you've, you've definitely done. 